Hey, yo, this is O-Culture. I am Ryan Peverly. I have some bonus audio for your ear holes this weekend. This was recorded during a conversation I had earlier this summer with Greg Stewart, a third-degree Blue Lodge Mason and a 32nd-degree Scottish Rite Mason. The audio quality is so-so because Greg was wearing a headset microphone that clicked and clacked, so apologies in advance for that. Regardless, there's some good stuff in here, including some talk on podcasting as both occult practice and a contribution to the great work, as well as some chatter on conspiracy theories. Greg actually mentions reptilians, which made me chuckle, all things considered. And I may have gotten a bit personal in terms of my romantic history and why I started podcasting to begin with. Also gets a little personal in the outro, so I hope you stick this one out, if only for that reason. Enjoy! Hello. Greg, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man? I made it through two of the books. I made it through Masonic Traveler and the the first of the of the three, maybe 20% through the second one. So I may be able to squeeze that the rest of that in tonight or tomorrow morning. But if I don't, I got plenty to talk about. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. I, I, I Actually, I appreciate you doing that. That's a, that's a tough feat. I, I, it, in, and I know the pain that you're going through, man. I, I did a podcast with a buddy now like six, seven years ago. So I, I know the work that goes into it and, and everything else. So it's great that you were able to read them that's that's actually impressive <laughs> well it's, but, uh, it's interesting because i've only been into the you know occult philosophy for really just maybe two years now i'm, I'm very new to it but my introduction to it was through the hermetic arts so uh-huh. it's weird i got turned on to alchemy it was like the very first subject that i i was introduced to and i, I was fascinated by it so to see that influence in Freemasonry was pretty cool. I had never actually heard that before. And I, and I know that you mentioned that you see the, the influences of Freemasonry a little differently. So it actually jives with a lot of what I've been reading myself in the past couple of years. I at least have a foundation, a foundational knowledge of, you know, alchemy and, and astrology and magic and things like that. So I think that actually helped me get through the text because you're right, man. It's pretty dense. You know, I mean, your, your books aren't long, but like any good philosophical treatise, they're they're very dense so <laughs> i yeah i know it's like i feel like sometimes i hear that from folks and it it as as nice as that is it's like ah uh, you know what i mean it's like God, i wish i should have made it longer maybe i explained more I, it, it's um well i mean i don't want to get too too into the the weeds with it now and we can definitely do that tomorrow but within certain circles i think that those things are sort of like the cherries on the tree you know what I mean? Those are like mm-hmm. the sweet berries, but for a good segment, it, it's sort of the you know meat and potatoes ads, ah, just meetings and this and that. So I mean, I think what I was really trying to do is trying to grab some of those nuggets and and pull those parallels together. And and for lay as well as you know new people or people who were fifty years into it to like, oh okay, that's what those things are. I mean, it's you know the, the, a lot of these things aren't testable. It's not like oh let me take this down and compare it to this over here and see if that's one thing or the other but yeah i'm glad i i'm glad that you, you got something out of it and and that it worked and hit some of the notes of other stuff that you looked at that's cool that's very yeah. cool I, i've always felt connected to freemasonry my uh my great grandfather on my so my my mom's grandfather was a freemason and he was 32nd degree and i have a really interesting story about him on his deathbed that i may be i may share with that with you when we speak tomorrow long story short he was on his deathbed and he was wearing his his ring and it was the last time i saw him i wasn't very old i was maybe four or five when he died but mm-hmm. he grabbed my hand and like squeezed it really hard and his ring made like an indentation on my finger like where he was grabbing me or like squeezing me yeah and the square and the compass and the g was imprinted on my hand for like a full day and <laughs> i just thought that was really interesting i don't know what the hell it meant back then obviously but um as i got older and i started to learn more about it you know i i thought wow that's a really interesting experience i don't know if that meant something but i've always since then i've always sort of been drawn to freemasonry somebody asked me to join a, a local lodge here um probably about 10 years ago i had just got out of college and i had started my first job at a newspaper local newspaper here in ohio where i live and we had a guy that yeah i had a guy that worked in the office he was like a 
going to pick up the papers every day they were printed and and he was a member of a local lodge here and he's like you should join because we had got to talk and I, you know he had worn a couple of shirts or something with like freemasonic symbols and stuff on it. and i was like oh are you, are you a member you know and he was like yeah and he told me that i guess you have to be invited to join is that still true uh well i mean why the opposite it's actually a, a non-invitation no one should ever ask you to it's it's actually the kind of thing that that you have to come into it on your own okay so so you have to ask that that's the oh maybe i'm I, misremembering I that's then. the misconception yeah. that a lot of folks have but but that's not to say that there aren't people out there who who would ask. You, you know what I mean? Who who would try to put the the bug in the ear, if you will, to say, "Hey, well, you should you ought to do this." You know, and maybe that that was his way of like sort of trying to put it into your head. And so a month or two later, you come back and say, "Hey, what about that?" You, you know what I mean? Which sort of yeah. covers that base of you asking. But yeah. And I mean, we could definitely, that's, that's something we could definitely talk about tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a but, pretty interesting experience for me because I really thought about it. You know, I was only like 23 or 24 years old and I was like, you know, I only know about it really through pop culture and mm-hmm. the pop culture information you get about Freemasonry is obviously very different than when you actually study it. But yeah, I don't know why I didn't pursue it, but I've, I've always felt connected to it in some ways. So it was interesting to get into your material and read more about it and actually find a deeper connection than I thought I had to it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. See, yeah, maybe that's, <laughs> so maybe, based maybe on, that's an in. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. So based on my notes, I got, uh, let's see, I got about four or five pages of, of notes and questions here. Holy so. Cow. Yeah, and I know how long a conversation can take based on how many notes I have, and (laughs) I'd like to ask you, first of all, you know, obviously, (laughs) we're going to talk in the morning, but how much time are we going to have? Dude, I got, I mean, it's 8 o'clock, it'll be 8 o'clock Pacific, so I I really got all day. I I mean, I could totally just, I could sit here for a couple hours, so, and if it ends up going too long, I I don't know, it's on your side, family-wise, kids-wise, all that good stuff, but if you've got something you got to do, we could always do part of it and then come back and do another part i'm totally open to that too actually i'm a single guy my girlfriend and i ex-girlfriend and i broke up probably a year and a half ago almost two years ago so i'm enjoying being single again because i was with her for about six years and everybody was always like oh why why haven't you gotten married yet and neither of us really had the desire to do that so uh, like after a while we're just like you know if we don't want to get married maybe we should just not do this anymore (laughs) Uh-huh. So, uh, and yeah. quite beneficial because that, that relationship ending is what propelled me on this path I'm on right now. I had talked about starting a podcast for several years when I was with her and never really had the motivation to do so, I guess. And yeah. didn't, didn't have the depth of knowledge either to really talk about anything at length. So as soon as I got single and that's the first time I lived by myself in my entire life. So I had my own space and was able to pursue, you know, some of these new interests that I that I found only when I became kind of solo and, and solitudinal. But yeah, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting path that I've been on the past couple of years with this project, and you know, getting to meet and talk to people like you who are so knowledgeable and and uh, obviously are clued into to this thing on a different level than than most people are. So it's pretty exciting for me to talk to you right now, even. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Totally approachable. Feel free anytime. That's wild, man. That that that's kind of how I think that you have to get into this sort of thing. You know what I mean? It's I, I keep wanting to like bust right into to having this kind of this conversation. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I know. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to squeeze it all out tonight and be like, oh yeah, we talked about this yesterday. You know, no, I'm, we I'm, we I'm could do playing. two just... things. We can do one of two things. We can. Save it all for tomorrow, or we could just do it all right now. It's up to you. But uh, I think I'd probably rather do it in the morning just because, you know, I I would feel fresher. I've been up all day preparing for it. So, um, (laughs) yeah, it would be kind of cool to maybe just start fresh tomorrow and, I don't know, have just a more cohesive approach to the beginning of the conversation, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah, but remind me about that because because actually there's there's a there's a there's a parallel from from my history in, in that same sort of uh, approach to this thing, uh, this study, and and just the the gradualness of it. You know, I think in I, back in the day when I used to do podcast, man, I'd have these like pre pre production conversations with whoever the guest was, and easily they'd be like an hour and a half long. 
and yeah. and we would go through everything and talk about it. that's why it's like i'm so hesitant to just like bah, here's what i think but like what i'm trying to say is is that it does take that sort of time it does take that process of of slow development you know there's no one place there's lots of books that you can go to and pick up and look at and be like oh that's what this is about but it's not until you can put these things in a context i think uh which comes with with let me read that this guy says let me read what that person says let me come to my own conclusions with this where's the synchronicity with it oh okay i can see something different you know i think we, we fall into these comfort zones of this is just the way it is, or, you know, it's what we've seen on TV or read a website about. And, and the reality of it is, is, is the bread and butter of every day doing it and, and trying to understand these things. Even, in, even in some of the things that I think so like tarot or Kabbalah, it's like, it's nice to think that these are like real, you know, powers or Enochian magic of like, oh, let me invoke a demon and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, but the reality is of it, Someone invented that at some point. That's not like something that goes back, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years. I, you know what I mean? So maybe there are threads of those things, but I can't imagine someone 6,000 years ago drawing salt circles on the ground and, and drawing sigils on stuff. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just seems like more of a, a contemporaneous evolution out of the periods in which those things came from now maybe they are they do stretch back to those older periods through parallels with other gods or practices and stuff like that but i think too often we get into this zone of like it wanting to be you know hoodoo kind of magic when when the magic is really in the in the doing of it it's you know it's the thought processes involved it's the meditations on things it's the effort and work behind it yeah so I did just make a note. So this is, yeah, I don't know if you've heard any of the previous podcasts I've done. Probably not, which is fine. Uh, but actually, um, I listened. Yeah, I did actually I listened to to one. Man, I tell you, it's hard living yeah. life. <laughs> no, I completely understand, man. Yeah, I I listen. See, when I first started doing this, I uh, I was listening to a lot. I've you know I've been listening to podcasts for a long time, and I probably yeah, had yeah. a rotation of like twenty different ones that I listen to regularly. And then when I started doing this last year. That whittled down quite a bit because I don't have any time yeah. to actually yep. listen to other people, which is which is kind of awful because uh, there's some good information, some good podcasts out there that are that are you know really really good, like not just in the space that I occupy, but you know just in general. I, I just love I just love the the medium, you know, of just listening to people talk, and it reminds me of oral traditions from ancient cultures from centuries ago, thousands of years ago, where everything was passed down, you know, by word of mouth. And I think that's kind of, I, th I see podcasting as kind of like a return to that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, totally. It totally does. I, I, I you know, if, if it weren't for being so busy, I've toyed with the idea of going back and doing a podcast. You, you, mm -hmm. If if you want, not that you want one other thing to try to do tonight or something else to do, but uh, go to the website, freemasoninformation.com and and or even just on my twitter bio so if you click on my twitter bio and follow the link to it it takes you to my bio yeah on that site um i think that they're listed on there and and yeah, if you want to just sort of poke through a few of them i did um i listened to yeah. one uh when i first contacted you because i saw that you had it but th but then i also saw that it wasn't like new yeah. Um, but I, I did scroll through some of the archive. Yeah, because they're all listed here. You did about 64 episodes, it looks like. So. Give or take, yeah. Yeah. Here yeah, but so, so to your point, though, I mean, it, 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 it's absorbing. It is so absorbing. And, and you're right. The other ones do sort of fall by the wayside. And I, in that, in, in its own right, is almost a, I don't want to say an occult practice, but I mean, that, that's sort of doing the work. You know, one of the, one of the, the terms that gets thrown around a lot is this idea of the great work. You know, if, if ever in the yeah. books that you're going through, you'll find someone who mentions it. Pike mentions it. Others do as well. I want to say Manly Hall does too, but, um, but it's, but it's this idea of the great work and the great work is, is sort of like, a like the Pink Floyd version of, of, uh, brick in the wall. Every, every person who's toiling in this sector, uh, and putting together things like this, so websites, podcasts, art, this, that, and the other, all of that is, is contributor to the great work. You, you know what I mean? So, so like this podcast that we're recording, what you're doing is, is, is putting in effort into that great work for yourself and for other people. Right. So right, yeah. 
it, it's it, it but it's it's all consuming it, it it's like it takes up every ounce of your thought every bit and and that that's really that occult practice you know what i mean i, I mean it sounds cheesy and and you know it's it's a little bit of hoodoo but that that's the concentration of work that's the time and effort and energy you know not to get into like sales and marketing stuff but you know malcolm gladwell and his ten thousand hours oh, yeah. uh, i mean that that's almost a, an extension of it you know it's that time how long does it take you to accumulate that ten thousand hours no, I completely understand what you're getting. That and that the great work I'm obviously <laughs> very familiar with because of uh, its its uh, relation to alchemy and alchemical philosophies. So, and yeah, I have a question for you. You know, I was just scrolling through the uh, the podcast here, and I see a couple people on here that that I may know, not know personally, but um, you've talked to Lon Milo Duquette. I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know he was a Freemason. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. <laughs> He's got an interesting story to it too. Yeah. I don't see him post much online anymore. A lot of, but he does a lot of guitar stuff, a lot of music. But yeah, he he was, or he is still. Yeah. And I know, uh, I know Greg a little bit from a of personality. We follow each other online. Yeah. He's a good dude. And then, um, oh yeah, so I might have to give a few of these a listen here if I can before the end of the night. Don't don't hurt yourself on them. You know what I mean? They're long, yeah. and, and and they're like variety shows. It was me and another guy, and and we yeah. would uh, tag team. Through these we used to do these for a lot of the technology caught up with it so we'd record them on a talk shoe was like the first one which i think is mm-hmm. still around and then blog talk radio yeah and then well we, we do these shows and they'd be like hour-long shows and then we do these post shows so so then we'd like just open the lines we did them live so so they were live for people listening we'd have people who could call in so i mean it was like a whole like radio thing uh, and then we do a post show, and the post shows a lot of times would be just way better than the show itself. It's crazy, but none of we didn't record ever record any of them. Yeah. So no, I when I first started doing this, I kind of realized the same thing. So after a few episodes, I started just recording as soon as we got on the call, because yeah, some of those like first few minutes of talking, and then the last few minutes of talking were just as interesting, if not more interesting than the actual conversation or like the interview itself. So I started doing this thing where I haven't really done it recently, but I would like pull out, you know, maybe eight, 10, 12, 15 minutes of conversation that preempted and postempted the actual interview. And I would post it separately as like a deleted scene, almost like like from a film. I did that (laughs) a handful of times maybe. And then I just stopped doing it because I realized, well, like if I'm good enough at this, I can just weave that stuff in to the actual conversation from the beginning and not have to pull it out separately. So, yeah, I turn the recording on as soon as we start talking. I, I don't really care, you know, how long we talk until we get into the actual interview, but it's always recording. So just be aware of that. Uh, not that it yeah, matters. Sure. I mean, you probably don't mind, but some people are like, wait, are we recording right now? And I'm like, well, yeah, we've been <laughs> recording for 20 minutes. What are you talking about? So, <laughs> no worries okay. at all. And, but so that, that's just <clears> like a, if, if, if you really want to spend the time doing it tonight, if not, yeah. don't even sweat it. Well, you know, it's it's already uh it's already about eleven o'clock out here on or in the east, so I'm not I'm probably Holy gonna be cow. awake much long yeah, well, you know. Yeah, I'm in Ohio. I don't know if I told you that. I'm actually in Ohio yeah, right yeah. now. So I was gonna ask you something. I completely yeah, forgot. Sure. Oh yeah, so we talked about we, we don't have a time limit then. If it's around two hours, that's fine with me. If it's even longer, that's fine with me too. I mean as long as it's good. Like I I don't care if it lasts for forty five minutes or three hours and forty five minutes, as long as it's entertaining. I have no issue with that. So but that's completely up to you. I leave that up to the guests, like how long they want to stay and talk. So Yeah, for sure. That's great. If at some point I start acting sketchy, it just means my wife's coming in and staring at me and yeah. glaring at me and <laughs> Well the only thing I have in my have to uh, call it a day. Huh? Yeah. I have a cat who does the same thing. Not quite as nagging as a wife maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> So this was the time when I pointed out to Greg the issues with his mic. No idea why I waited so long to bring it up, but we troubleshot it for a few minutes and it got better, but then it got worse. So it goes. Anyway, let's pick the conversation back up. It's an Air Force X-12 Turtle Beach headset. So well, we're if sounding we're good right World now. of Warcraft, I think it'd be A-OK. But... <laughs> yeah. God, I haven't played that for probably 15 years, man. <laughs> dude that's like my crack i go back to it every so often and it's like yeah. oh I just fall into it for six months and i know it's it's one of those games that is it really is timeless you know i know they probably keep adding to it but i haven't played it for a long time so 
Yeah, don't start now. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. I don't have time to start. I used to be v- big into to gaming, but I have a PS4 and I have all these games sitting here, and that's kind of like uh, that's that's the kind of stuff that that holds me back from doing what I need to do. You know, like when I started reading a lot more of this occult literature and you know taking the podcast obviously more seriously, I. I cut back on my TV watching. I cut back on video games. I cut back on just a lot of things. I don't. I don't really go to the movies much anymore, just because I'm always. I always have my nose in like four books at once. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think that's good though. You know, like I, it's it served me pretty well to do that. Well, I mean, as long as you're getting something out of it, right? And and I mean, if if for now or in ten years, you you know what I mean. If it's in ten years, it's like write a book about this stuff, or let me Mm -hmm. let me take a stab at my own thing with this. I mean, it's definitely time well spent i mean if unless at the point things are suffering in which case then you know you got to do other stuff so yeah you know like i wonder uh what happens if i meet someone and i, I, get, I get into <laughs> a relationship stuff goes out the window <laughs> well, so what i'm saying is like you know gosh i really like living by myself and i really like just kind of doing my own thing and not having like that sort of responsibility but then I'm, on the other hand i'm I'm really like this may come up in our conversation tomorrow, but I really do believe in love and how that's uh, you know a guiding force in the universe, and we all need it. We all we all crave it, you know. So I, I just wonder like if that comes back into my life, like how is this going to affect my podcast and my reading and all this stuff? So yeah, it's something I've yeah. been thinking about. Well, not I that mean, not that you should put. Crazy, but... Well, I was to say not that you should put the journey of yourself over your journey with somebody else, but. I feel like that's that's what these occult lessons are, I think. And maybe you could tell me more about this tomorrow, but it seems like everything I've read is, is really focused on, you know, just like knowledge of self and getting to know yourself and, and enlightening yourself. And it doesn't really, it's not a social endeavor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of, so, so I mean, as, as jokey as it sounds, I mean, so, so the, the, the bit that I have on Twitter, you know, the Hermetic Hermit, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. it, it really is a, a, a solitary practice, but it doesn't have to be. And, and I think, you know, that's why functions like Masonic Lodges or Rosicrucian Pranoas or, or Golden Dawn meetings, you, you know what I mean? They, they all, they all function for the purpose of not getting stuck in your head. Right. But it's easy to. It's very easy to. No, I, I agree. That's that's one of the things that you know, when I first got on my own a couple of years ago or so, and I started to get see I had I had this interest in, you know, kind of this this fringe stuff. Not not necessarily philosophy, but you know, like I was listening to like Coast to Coast AM, you know, talking they're talking about aliens and UFOs and just you know, like conspiracy theories and things like that and not much philosophical discourse going on and you know, but I got into that stuff before I got into the occult, and that stuff is scary. You know what I mean? Like, that stuff kind of, like, conspiracy theories, for example, just really just make me paranoid. So I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't really read or, like, hear much about them anymore because, I, one, it just makes me mad. But then, two, on the, on, like, beyond that, it, it really just kind of fucks with my mind, you know? It just makes me a little paranoid. So, but then I had to face myself after that when I started reading about the occult, and I was like, you know, I'm reading about the shadow self, you know, like Carl Jung talks about this, right? Kind of that alchemical transmutation of your, of your own psyche and your own spirit. And then you really have to accept the fact that you do have kind of that dark side and then just kind of learn how to control it, I guess. But yeah, the conspiracy part of it is, is a weird avenue to go down. You know, it's, it's a fun avenue to go down, mm-hmm. but, but it's real easy to get sucked into the weeds with it and then pulled right down the drain right along with everybody else who's, yeah. you know, cheering on the sides as to, to UFOs or Bigfoot or Pizzagate. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. real easy to, to just sort of bandwagon with that stuff. Because it all, it's, it's like the, the deeper you get into it and the longer you spend in it, the more it seems, quote unquote, to make sense. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. I mean, a, it's a path, you know. It's, it's, it's a, it's all a path. It's just in how you take it. Well, I, I look at it like this, man. That set me on this path. So there has to be, you know, it was, the, it was my first step in realizing that there was more to this, whatever this is, you know, like there's more to this than meets the eye, right? Like there's, there's mm-hmm. something going on underneath the surface of what we would call, you know, this this sort of, uh, you know, collective reality that we're all experiencing together. There's just something beyond that that 
it's not quantifiable, I don't think, you know, that's, I think we talk about spirit and, and ether and things like that. Like, that's, I think, what we're talking about. Is there's just something beyond that veil there that getting into conspiracy theories, for example, could set you on this path. And that's, that's what it did for me. So I wouldn't change that. You know, I got paranoid for about six months there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like, it really opened my eyes, you know. I yeah, remember what it yeah. was, too. It was, um, yeah, it was, you know, like listening to stuff about Sandy Hook and like, you know, just all these nine eleven things. And it's like, wow, like I, I can see how that makes sense. But yeah, I, I think that it, it just goes to that furthest extreme. So it's, it's one thing to say, Oh, it's aliens. It's another thing to say, Oh, it's Roswell. And then it's another thing that's, Oh, it's aliens, alien reptiles controlling this. Mm-hmm. And, and then those reptiles are now the government and the government are the ones who are dicty. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's rabbit hole, dude. It just keeps going. I know. And, and not everybody follows the, you know, follows the same stream of consciousness down the line, but it seeps in enough at a certain point that it starts affecting people. It starts affecting things. Yeah. I, uh, I subscribe to Occam's razor when it comes to, this sort of stuff you know especially conspiracy theory but i'm quite sure that there is uh i like to call it fuckery there's some fuckery going on here i don't know to what level but the simplest explanation of it is probably the truest one right i mean that's that's how i look at it so it's a conspiracy of men i I don't know if i really believe in reptilians like you were talking about or (laughs) <laughs> even sometimes i'm like mathematically there there has to be intelligent life if our universe is as big as as people say it is but i could also see it's us just being alone here and that's that's i think the scariest thought of all is that we are all alone here you know there's nobody there's nothing yeah. else out there but us and but but that sort of assumes a uh, that's almost a, a degree of paternalism and assuming that that we are the highest thinking uh, creature on this planet and so therefore there are other higher thinking creatures out in the universe when when maybe the reality is we're just a creature and this is just our moment of sentient thought you, you know what I mean to ask that question and in ten thousand years we'll be back digging in the dirt for grubs again you, you know what I mean <laughs> so so. Maybe I mean I think I I think I follow the the Sagan and and uh, Hawking's idea that sure there's probably intelligence in the universe or there's probably aliens in the universe but who's to say that they're any smarter more or less than us or or if they're even smarter than a dog you, you know what I mean or a bug right. or even if they exist at that same level so I I think it's our hubris to want the aliens to be like us in some way so that we're able to communicate it when the reality is that they're probably pond scum or it's some being or creature that we have no means of being able to interact with or communicate with. You, you know what I mean? Not to get no, I do. Yeah. weird or rabbit hole on that, but I mean, it's, it's our hubris to think that it's going to, they're going to come down as Spock. You know what I mean? Because it puts yeah. us in the driver's seat of being this God creator, which in some sense ha- has its purpose, but when it comes to like alien life, I mean, you know, why? Well, <laughs> we watched too much Star Wars and Star Trek and thought too hard that, yes, this is the way the universe works. And the universe works is probably microbes on a comet that's going to smash into the planet and wipe us all out. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But so. that, that goes back, you know, this. I think this all ties back to that hermetic thought of. Well, maybe it's not hermetic, really, but just that thought of you are a co-creator in this process. You, the individual, and, and what's inside of you, you know, God or however you want to look at it, you know, that's that's the driving force here. So if you subscribe to hermetic thought, then you you know that reality is mutable, right? It's it's changeable mm-hmm. based on, you know, just things that's just as simple as mindset, you know, and just like I have people in my life that, that are so negative, and I, I had to cut them out, you know, because their thought process starts and ends in one spot. And it's always it's always pessimistic. And then I found that, you know, the more that I was around these kind of people, the more pessimistic and negative I became. And that if I just changed my mind and thought more positive and optimistic, then my entire experience that I'm having here changes completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yep. to me, I've seen that. I've I've had that. I've had that happen to me. You know, and there's something. There's something to that, and it it is not measurable by science. You know, like even quantum physics can't touch this kind of stuff. But the lack of scientific explanation does not trump my personal experience that I've had. 
I had an argument the other day with somebody about GMOs, for example, and they were like, well, there's nothing wrong with GMOs. There's nothing wrong with eating, you know, not organic food. And I was like, well, that's fine. But I ate that sort of diet my entire life until about two years ago. And then once I stopped and changed my, my nutrition completely, I lost a ton of weight. I was happier. I was more energetic. So don't tell me that because maybe mainstream science says one thing that I'm just supposed to believe it and take it as gospel over my own personal experiences. Yeah. Anyways, I'm just rambling <laughs> at this point. Sorry. No, no. I mean, I, I, you're, you're spot on. I, it, it's hard, though, to have uh, those conversations with fixed minds. Or I had a friend who once said they were, you know, calcinated minds who, who that's how they're thinking. You know, it's, it's getting out of the mainstream and trying to do better, try to, to do the right thing. And right's a nebulous term, you know, chemical, non-chemical in this instance with GMOs. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I'm, you know, I'm, it, the, I eat a mostly plant and some meat diet. So not a lot of, not a lot of processed foods, not a lot of breads and carbs. You, you know what I mean? So, so just trying to eat really what our bodies were designed to eat. Right. Yeah. That's, that's so. how I am, man. Like part of my, uh, I hate this term because it's overused now, but part of my, you know, awakening, my spiritual sort of awakening that I had the past couple of years was starting to treat myself better by doing something as simple as like what you just described, you know, change my mm -hmm. diet and start to eat more whole foods. You know, I mean, it's, it sounds cliche. It sounds like it's like I'm advocating for paleo ketogenic diet, but it's exactly what I started doing. And I mean, I, I can't, I can't argue with the results so far. Yeah. 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 I feel better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Well, okay. So tomorrow, I got five pages of notes here we got to get through. So, <laughs> well, you I'll know, let hey, you check them we, off as we yeah, go. And, and, I was going to say, like, we'll we, don't, we, <laughs> we don't have to get through them all. For all sure. right, man. All right. Well, um, and for the record, I, I was recording this entire conversation uh, just to <laughs> test our levels. I figured you would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, not that I'm going to use it, but this may pop up as a deleted scene here in the future. So we'll see. Yeah. Told it. No worries. All right, man. Sounds good. All right, Ryan. All right. Take care. All right, man. See ya. Bye. Hey, if you made it through that, kudos to you for sticking around through that audio quality. My apologies again, and my thanks again to Greg for spending that extra time and allowing me to record what was an impromptu conversation late on a Saturday night. Actually, he didn't really allow me to record, but I did it anyway because I'm a rebel like that. And if you haven't heard episode 33 yet with Greg, please do check it out. The audio is a bit better because I spent a lot of time cleaning it up, but there's still some clicking and clacking here and there. Regardless, it's a conversation that really gets to the roots of Masonic philosophy. It seems more and more like that organization may have been infiltrated at the top and made to look like a bunch of evil doers. Which is a shame, because the Hermetic, Gnostic, and Kabbalistic teachings are quite liberating and enlightening, at least to me. I did want to touch on the personal comments I made here, too. After listening back to what I said, I realized I may have sounded a bit contradictory, at least... That's how it came off to me. See, I preach love all the time, not just on air, but also off air. And for me to say something like, I'd have to reconsider my personal relationship status because of this podcast is ludicrous. I love doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it regardless of where life takes me. This is not just a hobby for me. It's not just something I'm trying to turn into a full-time gig. This is something I feel like I'm meant to do. I feel like I not only have a purpose now, but that I also gave myself that purpose, which to me is what we all should be striving for. We all crave purpose and meaning in our lives, but most people allow that to be created for them, specifically by working for other people. And don't get sucked into that matrix anymore. Do something for yourself. But let's be real. Our purpose and meaning has nothing to do with any sort of artistic endeavor. As much as I can't believe I'm saying that because I love art, I love creating art, and I see the value in it. Not just from an individual perspective, but from a collective and cultural perspective as well. Art has always been a vehicle for us to funnel our emotions into a place where we can tell our story without fear or prejudice, 
and a place where we can create something magical for others who experience it. And you can't undersell or underestimate the value of that. But the real art in this life lies in creating something magical within yourself and then sharing it with someone else. And no artistic endeavor, no hobby, no career, no amount of money comes before your real job, your real purpose, your real meaning, which is to love and be loved. To love with a love that is more than love, to quote my man Poe. I mean, it's time to stop being at war with our own hearts, to quote another great poet, my man Tupac. And I was thinking, you know, with this recent eclipse and all the energy and symbolism associated with it, let's use that. Let's use that energy to reinvent ourselves, to refocus ourselves, to bring peace to our hearts and to love ourselves. And then let's reinvent and refocus our relationships with others and our love with others. That and that alone is the great work. And with that, I'm out of here. Oculturepodcast.com slash support if you're interested in supporting the show monetarily. I'll be hitting you up again soon with another full-length episode, one that's completely and totally for me. Until then, you've just been initiated into Oculture. I am Ryan Peverly, reminding you to love yourself, think for yourself, and question authority.